And still in Africa, President Felix Shisekedi of the Democratic Republic of Congo has announced the appointment of Judith Sumiwa Toluka as the country's first female prime minister. This landmark decision is in fulfillment of a campaign promise he made. It also marks a significant step towards gender equality in Congolese politics. We have more details. Judith Sumingwa Tuluka, a former planning minister, has assumed her new role at a critical juncture for the Democratic Republic of Congo, particularly at a time when the country's eastern region has been torn by strife. Addressing the nation in her inaugural speech aired on state television, Prime Minister Tuluka pledged to prioritize peace and development efforts, particularly in the conflict-ridden eastern provinces. The areas rich in minerals and resources have been plagued by relentless violence, leading to the displacement of millions of civilians and earning an ugly label of being in one of the world's worst humanitarian crises. Prime Minister Toluca expressed deep concern for the plight of those affected by the ongoing violence and reaffirmed her commitment to finding sustainable solutions to the crisis. The Congolese president, who secured re-election for a second time last December, has also reiterated his commitment to addressing the root causes of the violence, which he has accused neighboring Rwanda of backing. Prime Minister Tuluka appointment comes with the task of forming a new government, a process that is expected to involve extensive negotiations with various political factions. Despite the challenges ahead, her appointment symbolizes a significant breakthrough in Congolese politics and offers hope for greater inclusivity in governance. For more on this uh, government fit in Africa, I'm now being joined online, uh, joined uh, by Lagos, joining Lagos by Professor of Strategic Studies and International Relations, David Awurawo. Good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. Now, beyond the symbolism of gender equality, how much of a significant breakthrough is this appointment in Congolese politics? It is significant because um, this is the first time in uh, you know uh, sixty years, over sixty years of uh, Congolese politics and independence, um, and I mean it is in line with uh, what is emphasized uh, globally. Uh, to ensure that governments are as inclusive as possible, involving women, involving the youth, involving those not so prominent in society. Uh, the more inclusive a government is, the better it is, because uh, uh, it makes for stability, it also makes for greater representation and more effective governance. So, beyond the symbolism, uh, it is important, it is, it, it is a landmark. Uh, in, in, in politics and uh, uh, development of uh, uh, DR Congo. Now, she's also an economist, uh, but as Prime Minister, Tuluka assumes her new role. Um, she faces the formidable task, one of steering the nation towards stability and the other um, towards prosperity. And that's a mis daunting challenges when you look at the, the, the violence in that country and the ongoing uh, uh, rift between Cong DR Congo and um, Rwanda. Talk to us about the, the, the exact task that is before her and then the constitutional powers to, to you know, enable her to do, do that task. Uh, well, the task is enormous. Um, in the address she made uh, you know, uh, just yesterday, um, she, she highlighted two things, which are the two important things that the country needs to focus on right now. One of them is stability. Um, in the eastern part of the country, we are aware of uh, the extensive violence there, which has gone on for 60 years, over 60 years. Um, the violence that has led to, uh, you know, uh, IDPs up to 5 million, um, you know, refugees up to 600,000, and uh, about 2 million of the children uh, malnourished. Um, so the, the task is daunting because uh, there's a whole lot that needs to be done to restore stability to the eastern part of the country. And that stability is a same point on for development because as long as uh, the conflict continues, uh, development uh, cannot, cannot take place because it means that people will be unsettled, people cannot, can't carry out their economic activities the way they should. And uh, the uh, long-term effect will be poverty and misery for the people, which is what they, what they experience right now. So, the task is daunting. Now, the second thing is this. 
The crisis in the eastern part of DR Congo also has an international dimension, just as we have pointed out, uh, Rwanda being a, a major player in this. This is not what one expects, uh, you know, the players in DR Congo alone to be able to resolve. They will need the intervention of, you know, uh, uh, external agencies, for instance, the Economic Committee of uh, East Africa, of, of Central African states, uh, the AU, and the rest of them. So those are things you will need to, you know, broaden uh, uh, activities and affairs so that those interventions can come in to help resolve the problem in the eastern part of the country. And of course, that's the only way development in the country can be achieved. Mm. And I just want to refer to um, that speech she made that you were talking about, where she talked, uh, she talked about, she pledged to prioritize peace and development efforts. And I was asking you earlier uh, whether she has the constitutional powers, because this is an appointment. Does she have the constitutional powers to proceed? And what challenges might she face um, in this regard? Well, in theory, she does. Because after the appointment, I mean, for sure, the, the country's constitution is very clear regarding what she has to do. She needs to form a government. She needs to ensure that uh, those appointed as ministers do their jobs. She needs to ensure that uh, the uh, country advances and all that. So, uh, in theory, yes, she does. But in practice, the president can, in fact, the, the president can fire her. And the country has uh, a, a history in that regard. Uh, the first uh, president of the country was uh, Joseph Kastabubu. Um, the Patrice Lumumba was uh, prime minister at the time. Was only there for three months, from June to September. Uh, they disagreed on ideological issues. One was lefty, the other one was, was centrist. And uh, Kastabubu just dissolved the government, and that was the end of the story. Before, of course, in a few months after that, uh, Lumumba was assassinated. Uh, so uh, the president holds the greater power. That the, from the from the the, the, the disposition of uh, uh, the, the president and the, the problems, the challenges the country faces, one expects that uh, uh, Shishekedi will allow her to do her job, will allow her to work according to what the you know what the constitution says, so that they can collectively uh, focus on solving the problems of their Congo and uh, ensuring a higher quality of life. Uh, for Congolese. Mm. And, and talking about forming a government, you, you mentioned that earlier. That, that would involve, um, it will involve extensive negotiations with political factions. What are the prospects? Well, the pro prospects are bright. Um, uh, the, the new prime minister has a good record of human relations. She has been planning minister before, and you know what, what uh, the record shows is that she is uh, level headed, uh, she has, uh, she's able to establish contacts. She is, uh, you know, open to compromise. With all of those qualities and with support of uh, Shekedi, uh, one expects that it shouldn't be too difficult or complicated for her to be able to form a government. But of course, after forming the government, the greater challenge will be how to govern well, uh, so as to improve the quality of life of Congolese and uh, ensure development for the country. Professor of Strategic Studies and International Relations, David Awarawo, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, it's a pleasure.